Underlayment should always be used over all surfaces or subfloors before installing the new floor. Choose the appropriate underlayment for your project. Chronotex underlayment, for example, can provide you with a combination of vapor barrier, surface leveling, and sound absorption characteristics. Lay the underlayment across the floor and connect the sheets with the self-adhesive strips. Tape butt end joints with duct tape. When installing flooring over a concrete subfloor, bend the underlayment approximately three inches farther up the wall. After the installation is complete, you can then trim away the excess underlayment. Before laying the floor, door casings and frames should be undercut to accommodate the heights of the floor and underlayment. Later on, cut a plank to the required shape and slide it into place. For maximum floor strength, planks should not be cut any shorter than 16 inches in length and 2.5 inches in width. Chronotex flooring can be laid starting with a folded plank in the first row and a partial width plank in the last row. If the end plank to be installed in any row is less than 16 inches, you will need to shorten the first plank in the row. Neither the first nor the last plank should ever be less than 16 inches in length. A Chronotex flooring system always works from your left to the right side of the room. Each new row will start with a different length plank in order to stagger the plank joints. This results in a stable floor. Four corners should never come together in any two rows. Start by laying the first plank with the tongue toward the wall, the groove away from the wall. Place 3 8 inch spacers between the walls and the edges of the planks. This is very important. Make sure they are 3 8 of an inch. Lay down the remaining planks that will make up the first row. Do not connect at this time. To install the first plank of the second row, angle the tongue side of the new plank into the groove of the plank in the first row, then lower into place. Now, lower the second plank of the second row into the first and second planks of the first row. Slide the planks together. Use a Chronotex tapping block with a hammer to close any gaps to ensure proper installation and a tight fit. Here's a tip. For easier and more precise connections, use a scrap piece as a bridge over seams when tapping planks together. Remember to stagger the joints to enhance the strength of the floor. To determine the length of the end planks, Measure the distance between the wall and the top edge or decorative face of the last plank installed. Make sure you subtract 3 8 of an inch from your cut mark to allow for expansion. When the last pieces of a row are put into place, you can achieve a tight connection using the Chronotex pull bar. To minimize waste, leftover cut pieces can be used to start the next row. For leftover planks to be usable, they must be at least 16 inches in length. Install planks in each new row using the same slide and tilt method. Measure and cut as necessary at the end of each row. Continue the process of laying your floor row by row, always proceeding from left to right. When you come to the last row, the space remaining might be less than the width of the plank. This will require cutting the final row of planks lengthwise to fit. To do this, measure the distance between the next to last row and the wall. Cut the final row of planks to fit, remembering to remove an additional 3 8 of an inch for expansion. Install the final row of planks using the same method as the previous row. Make sure there is room for spacers. For doorways, cut planks into the required shape and slide into place under the door. Finish your floor with Chronotex molding. Your next step, stand back and enjoy the view.